Welcome to Studio 58 Day Live, the Jamaica Information Service, our discussion program coming to you live on Facebook. I am your host, Vaughn Davis. Thank you to everyone joining us online, wherever you are. We really do appreciate it. Thank you very much for your eyes. And like how we have your attention, do us a favor now. Share this video with a friend or two or 5,000 so we can have a very lively discussion. And as you watch, remember to send in your questions and your comments so we can put them to our guests. Now, today's show is the kind of show I enjoy doing because it coincides with my own belief that there needs to be a rethink about how we approach the subject of entrepreneurship. I believe we need to introduce our people to the entrepreneurship mindset and business ownership much sooner than we generally do now. And reinforce that in addition to putting money in their pockets, the entrepreneurial mindset can help people to find creative and innovative solutions to the major challenges affecting our communities and wider society. It seems our guests today, the British Council, agree with me because they have introduced an initiative called the Social Enterprise in Schools Project, which is training our youth not just to be entrepreneurs, but social entrepreneurs who are addressing major issues that affect them. Here with us to tell us all about it is Social Enterprise and Youth Engagement Manager at the British Council, Mr. Damien Campbell. And with him is Holland High School student, Josane Skeel. We also have with us Ms. Nakita West, Manager of the VM Foundation, who will share how her organization's sponsorship support is helping expand the reach of the program. Welcome to all of you. Thank okay. you. Well, Thank you very much. Great. Thanks for having us. Glad to have all of you here. All right. So let's begin with you, uh, Damien. Just to begin with, um, persons may, uh, as we were talking before we fully got on here, just let persons um, understand what the British Council is all about and, you know, why they do this kind of work in Jamaica. Give us a little background history into the British Council. All right. So the, the British Council is UK's Organization for Cultural Relations. Uh, we're working across, uh, across 110 countries across the world, sorry. And um, we, we basically um, deliver activities uh, around uh, cultural relations on the work uh, that include education, arts, and what we call society, uh, which is basically community development in our context. Um, and we mainly work with young people, but we work from ages three, up to as old as you would want to believe because of our um, community engagement approach. And our um, objective is, is really to engage and uh, build um, strong relations in the countries with, within which we operate. In Jamaica, uh, we're delivering our programs in three um, areas, which is education. Um, so this program, well, falls under the society portfolio for social enterprise. Um, or core skills program in Jamaica um, under the uh, ed education portfolio. And then under our arts um, work, we, we, we deliver the um, Backstage to the Future program. We're also working with the um, JBDC on a cultural and creative industries mapping project. So wide and varied in terms of the development work that we do here in Jamaica. Yeah, so you have a real good footprint in terms of making an impact, which is great. Now let's get straight into it. Talk to me about this social enterprise in schools project. Where did it, how did it originate and then how did you guys roll it out? What's, the, what's its overall objective? All right, so, so basically um, the, the, the British Council and um, well, coming from the UK, um, we've seen where social enterprises has contributed to um, the development of the uh, economy in the UK. And as a result of that, um, we uh, have been working to the British Council, 30 countries at least across the world, to support countries, communities, people around um, building their economy, building their communities, and contributing to a rebalancing of the economy, if you put it that way, through social enterprises. In, in, in other words, we help uh, communities and people who would not equally participate in the economy to utilize their skills, um, to solve problems that impact them. It could be women, young people, and it's done through um, solving the social problems, but through um, um, increasing your income or creating income for, for persons which you work. So that's how uh, the initiative started. The schools work uh, for social enterprise, which gave birth to this project. 
I was led by a, a social enterprise survey that was done in 2017 here, where we saw um, the characteristics of clubs and societies in, in high schools uh, have strong similarities with that of social enterprises that flourish. Um, so we saw where it would have been a good um, approach to connect the social enterprise work with, um, what, with the work that's being done um, in schools. And from that, um, the engagement with the VM Foundation um, arose for us to have those discussions around um, the issue of youth unemployment in Jamaica and the fact that um, the VM Foundation strongly focuses on youth empowerment. So it was a very good merger um, to uh, equip young people in Jamaica with um, social entrepreneurship skills, um, core skills, which is also um, improving areas of critical thinking, problem solving, also financial literacy, uh, which will allow them to transition from high school into the work world, not looking for a job or waiting for somebody to give them a job or to create opportunities for themselves, for other people, but also solving some of the nation's problems. And from that, we, we now have um, more bolder, more exposed young people looking at the world from a more um, exposed and and, and in informed perspective, knowing that they are change makers themselves to um, creating opportunities um, in Jamaica. Right, so how many schools are we in, in, in at the moment? Uh, we are in project? currently 14 schools. We had in year one, six schools, and we tried to engage persons across the country. Um, and we've done that in the second run um, for, for year two, we're now in year three. Uh, we're still working with 14 schools. Unfortunately, with COVID, we weren't able to go out to engage the new schools. So we've taken on a new approach to delivering the project online through the regular platforms that the Ministry of Education has um, encouraged for, 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 for students to use. So we're now able to engage even individual young people who are interested in the program. All right, let me switch on over to Nakita. Hello, Nakita, again. We know that VM has had a long, long history of, of, of working with our, our nation's youth. You know, the fun thing I always like to say, what's better than a good friend? Because, um, uh, you know, people say good friend better than, better than pocket money. Mm -hmm. I always say what's better than a good friend is a good friend who actually have little pocket money <laughs> that can spend and give a little thing. And that's what VM seems to be doing. And they focus primarily on helping our youth. So I guess it wasn't that big of a stretch to partner on this program. But what, what in particular about this program, um, raised your guys' eyebrows enough that made you want to get on board and lend some support? So uh, the VM Foundation um, focuses on improving the quality of lives of Jamaicans. Um, youth empowerment is a pillar that we focus on. Um, and in the British Council's curriculum, um, we saw the, score, the core skills that we saw as life skills that were necessary for any young persons to transition. And along with our financial literacy training, we felt that these um, skills were really um, a, a body of information that these young people would have found beneficial and really would have helped us to achieve the goal of improving their quality of life, that they eventually would have better life outcomes being, um, life outcomes, sorry, being exposed to the program. And so um, it was a perfect combination, you know, being um, learning about business, um, learning to be socially conscious um, and while you're, you're developing and implementing your business, but also learning about saving and investing and managing your, your, your business financially, learning how to communicate and to collaborate. And these are skills that oftentimes when young people go into jobs or go into the work world, um, they are often criticized of not having. And so we felt that, you know, it was an important partnership for us to start that ball rolling at this early age. Right. So talk to me about what, how, how exactly, let's get specific in terms of the kind of support that you're providing mm -hmm. to this initiative. Well, you know, how exactly are you providing the support? What, you know, what, what are you guys doing? So, so, you know, you started out, right. You know, I'm good friends with pocket money. <laughs> and so we do, we do um, support the program financially um, directly to the students or the, the club themselves. We provide that seed funding. And of course, overall to the project itself. Um, we also provide financial literacy um, sessions. And so um, Damien mentioned that we are going digital. We've now um, had digitized or um, created videos for all our um, 
sections of financial literacy. And so that's one of the main components that we actually um, deliver or bring to the program. We do provide mentors for the schools or VMP members, um, though they're struck with time, um, they do um, at times engage with the students and the, the, the teachers. Um, and so we're really pleased that we were able to connect with our schools all over the island um, in this way. All right, so great. All right, so now that the adults are done talking all the business and all that stuff, let's go on to the most important person here. Josine Skeel, who's a student at Holland High School. Josine, are you there? Are you hearing me? Yes, I am hearing you. All right, so talk to me about, talk to me about what's been happening. What has the experience been like for you under this program? How has it helped you to really come and appreciate entrepreneurship? And talk to me about some of the different initiatives that you, you, know, you, you introduced in your school or for yourself or so on. Go ahead. Right. For me, social enterprise, it has helped me a lot because first day, I wasn't always this bold person. So social enterprise has helped me to step out of my comfort zone and to be a part of something that is literally greater than or a part of me. So um, on this journey with social enterprise, I've learned a lot of things, mainly how to make things out of things that would have considered to be not usable and so forth mm -hmm. and we have i have learned to be have a good time management system time management i've now learned to control how i use my time so using my time wisely so this has helped me to open up my understanding in certain things and how to be more financially managed and so forth mm -hmm. um at school or most or major project that we did was first identifying a social issue that we were faced with. And this social issue was the road, con the condition of our road. So the infrastructure of our road in front of our school. So we decided to do something that would help to fix that issue. So we started out by getting some old magazines a newspaper and support to make mats and posters and support that is, um, can be used to sell to the students, even teachers and even persons in the community. So everybody jumped on board to be a part of um, this event that we had. And uh, through this social enterprise, we were able to fix the parts of the role that we mentioned before, and also to develop an entrepreneurship center at our school. Although it's currently not finished due to COVID, but it's getting there. Well, sounds amazing to me. I mean, I mean, you saw a problem, you identified a solution, you worked towards it, you put it together, and and you know you executed a solution. So this is fantastic. So how is the road looking these days? Uh, were you guys successful in how you know how much are the road in the fix basically? That's what, that's what, that's so what. it's not looking too bad now. It's as I can say, it's way better than it was before, because you know the road leading to Holland High School it was in a bad condition so it's not looking bad at all all right so and how um how many of you guys are involved in the part in the program at your school you and how many other persons were you know part, so it part, was you know? it was about uh, 40 to 50 of us it was a lot because it consisted of lower school and both upper school even the sixth form students were part of it as myself so you know it consists of a lot of students in the first half i must say it, we didn't have a lot of students because you know persons weren't too interested in doing this because they were thinking that this this is not theirs problem to be fixing the road and so forth. Mm -hmm. But after getting in tune and seeing everybody moving along with it, they initially come on board with the idea. All right, fantastic. All right, uh, let me um, go back over to you, Damian. So I guess uh, that sounds like a very wonderful testimony, testimony for your program so far. I mean, you've, uh, at the school, they've been able to um, involve around 40 youth, which is not a very easy thing to do. And they're appreciating, they're not only seeing, you know, psychological benefits in terms of learning and education, there's actual physical, tangible benefit. Them fix a road. I mean, I don't think you realize just how big a deal that is in the context of Jamaica, especially in light of the weather that we've been having lately. This is truly amazing. So talk to me about some of the other success stories that you've been um, seeing in this program, Damian. Um what, what I mean, this is this is one of the very good examples, as as you said. Um, so can you imagine having maybe 50, the other forty students or so from Holland share their experience, mm -hmm. and then you multiply that by another fifty across the, all the schools. 
Um, so that's the impact that we you know, have been achieving and want to continue um, promoting. But um, in terms of successes, uh, we, in the 14 schools looking across, um, uh, we have say Charlie Smith High School who, you know, their problem was, I mean, just challenges attending school because of um, financial challenges, um, having not having students being exposed and the natural talent that comes from, 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 from that community. Um, naturally, um, uh, music was selected as the, 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 the product. Um, so they've started selling those product, that product, and have been making um, income from that, which they're using to support um, students within the institution. We have um, or, or Guys Hill High School who had a problem with the disposal of um, the, the, the bulbs that are in the school. They've used that now to um, replace it with LED strips and they're, um, with their, they've infused that into the bamboo plant and are selling LED lights. They've also partnered with um, a, a solar company in Jamaica, uh, which I think is a good um, example of partnerships. Um, Holland High School, for instance, before they got their seed funding, um, borrowed their resources from another club and then repaid when they made their profit. So mm -hmm. we're saying that these are very good examples that young people are utilizing um, that as adults they'll require to, to, to use to solve problems around them. Um, we had in, in states, the young people had a problem with bullying and um, they went on a drive to, to build this, the, the self-confidence of young people through a, a t-shirt company and um, that has been going well. So there, there are various solutions. We have um, Cumberland High School who um, quickly identified the, the issue of mosquitoes in Portmore and how um, used tires were disposed of and they um, uh, made Ottomans or mm -hmm. what you call in Jamaica hassock in the old time days. Very, very um, good products that people are still doing this time when they're not at school, calling to say, can I purchase? And um, these are the examples that, that we want to, to show as good impacts. We, what we've had um, from the surveys that we've, we've, um, we've done so far, young people saying that I did not know that I could be a part of the solution to problems. I thought um, problems were to be solved by adults. Mm. Um, so um, those are some of the great things coming out. Um, naturally, we've seen it happen uh, in other countries, but also in Jamaica where because of the student activism component of the program, more students are attending school more regularly, which mm. means more engagement with teachers, more engagement with their content, which means eventually more access and acquiring knowledge, which will carry them through school because they're actually now seeing the relevance of the various subjects that they're utilizing, being applied into a business where, where it allows them to, to, to make um, some form of profits or income. So I think it's a, a full circle program, which um, you know, builds a holistic, from a holistic approach, builds um, young people, not only for today, but for tomorrow. With a, product, with a project like this, I mean, uh, the, the, the value and the benefit is clear. So the question for me then would be, how do other schools get involved? I mean, people, persons would have seen and felt like, okay, this is clearly doing a good job and the students are being positively impacted. Where are you now in, this, um, in, the, whole, in the whole process rather? And how can our students who are students or schools who are not necessarily currently involved find a way to you know, partner and get involved and so on? Right. So, so what we've done um, for the the two previous years prior to COVID, uh, we had um, we had open calls where, where schools would have to sign up. Um, we still encourage schools to, to, to contact either the Victor Mutual Foundation or the British Council via our um, website or, or Facebook page for British Council. Um, in VM's um, um, case, it, it's their Instagram page. You can contact them. Um, or you can call our offices um, to, to get more further information. Uh, for the school, we'll need to, to speak with one of the teachers or school leaders to, to make that contact. But what we've gone further to do because of COVID and to make it accessible, we're delivering the, the, our training sessions online through Google Classroom. Um, so it's accessible to any young person who is interested in participating in the program. So um, you'd need to reach out to us just the same. 
and uh, we will have you connected into the program. Um, right. But uh, just on. putting it uh, uh, much further where we are looking is that we would want this more accessible to all young people in secondary schools in Jamaica. And that's where we're looking to, to engage the Ministry of Education uh, more around this because we've shown the impact uh, how can we um, utilize the lessons that we've learned from this program to further enhance the, the, the entrepreneurship curriculum that's already um, in, in schools um, to make it um, a fulsome program that also focuses on social entrepreneurship? Well, Nakita, it looks like you might need to go and revise the figure and the check because it looks like, well, my intention is to try every way as possible to make this the, a widely publicized program to make as many people as possible know about it because the benefits are clear and they're obvious. So it's uh, the question in this VM um, committed for the long haul as more and more schools hopefully decide to come on board and, and get involved and be positively impacted by all the work and the positive energy that's going on. Absolutely. Um, I, you know, we just did an, um, an evaluation which um, told us that if we are not continuing, you know, we'd be, we'd be foolish because the information really says that, you know, this is um, useful, this is successful, and we really need to expand. And, and the board of Victoria Mutual Foundation has said we need to really um, champion the cause with the Ministry of Education so we can expand. So I believe that is our commitment that we will be um, continuing this program. And we really just want to see it um, just like just being that other students um, can benefit from um, our program just like her. So what, um, what has the program itself taught you and I guess uh, the other persons involved in terms of the mindset of the youngsters and their willingness to make an impact and, and acquire the skills, acquire these new skills to, to, to learn, to, to, to solve problems and, you know, turn a little profit and become but business people at such a young age? What has, what has the program, what kind of insight has it given you in terms of the minds of our young Jamaicans and their willingness to make a, make a difference? You know, um, I like that question because um, it gives us an opportunity to um, showcase our young people and the talents. And the program really has unearthed and created a platform for them to um, to show their creativity and to, to just do well because we've given them the opportunity to believe in themselves and to do something. Um, so it's really reinforced what I've already believed our young people have. They, did, they always had the capacity to do this. Um, and I'm glad that we have the platform um, provided that platform for them. Um, they're quite creative. They're very innovative. Um, they Once you engage them, they just, and believe in them, because that's critical too, because um, sometimes they're just, I'm not going to vote it because, you know, just like Josine said, you know, it's adult, big people problem. Mm -hmm. But once you engage them um, and get them involved, you can, you just see how they light up. You see um, how they come up with different ideas. There's this, um, almost generational gap because we feel like we know how things must go but they have such a different view of how things are and how they, they spin things or how they come up with different solutions you would be we'd be surprised to see some of the ideas that um, have come from them and um, you know we have so much value in our young people and we can learn so much from them all right, Josine, one, once more for you. Uh, now, I'm going to ask you to become a bit of a brand ambassador. This is something you're going to need when you need to develop as you become a bigger entrepreneur and, you, you know, you start taking over Jamaica and opening business after business and so on and so forth. I'm calling it down for you. Just take it from me. It's going to happen. All right. Now, in terms of being, a, um, if you had the opportunity to go to another school or to another group of students and just sell this program to them, give them reasons why they need to get on board and, and you know, what benefits they will they will reap from being a part of it. I'm going to give you, a, you know, get, take a couple of minutes and just explain it to them, sell it to them and let them know what the benefits are for joining a program like this. All right. Firstly, social enterprise. What is social enterprise to you? You have to think within yourself, what is it that you want how to envision what you'd want Jamaica to be? You'd have to look at and see a Jamaica that you want to live in. So, how to fix some of these issues that we're having in Jamaica is the first question that you'd have to ask yourself. Is it that we're going to sit down, sit down and just see these issues going by and not do anything about it? All right, social enterprise is this place where you can come and feel like you're a part of something that is bigger than yourself. It's not something that 
is a burden to you, but something that you can actually learn from. You gain a lot of experience from being a part of social enterprise. You actually go out there to assist certain issues that you see happening in your community or even in Jamaica. So being a part of social enterprise, you can't imagine the opportunities that may come your way. All right. Well, just doing a quick check online. Uh, Josiane, you seem to have a very big fan. Uh, young with Bernard, who sounds like your cousin, who's just saying, yeah, man, appearing just a big up left, right and center. I mean, <laughs> yo. All right. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully he's, um, you know, you, when you grow up, you can do a thing for him, you know, big, so shout him out. Because I mean, he must shout you out left, right and center, you know. So, I think you need yeah. to know. Go ahead. Um, also, um, Paulette Chambers online. Thank you, Paulette. Thank you for your comment. Um, she's asking, is this program only beneficial to students and young people? So I suspect them and they're wanting to know whether or not there's a branch of this program that can be made available to persons, you know, maybe uh, who aren't in school or uh, persons who can appreciate the value of taking on social entrepreneurship as a cause and, you know, reaping the benefits and, you know, making a little profit while actually solving some of society problems. Any consideration towards improving the program in that kind of way? Right, so, so they're, 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 um, we also have programs, that, that's a British Council that's running across the world. Um, active Citizens, that, that's one that has a social enterprise context and it takes on the approach of, you know, understanding your community, but building persons as community leaders. And then they're also um, sent into training around starting um, social enterprises. So that's a program. It's not delivered here. Um, there's no partnership on that yet, but we are optimistic that we can um, deliver it in Jamaica. However, I think um, what um, she would need to know is that um, the, the social enterprise sector in Jamaica is a growing one. Um, the Ministry of um, Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries at the time, uh, which is up to maybe a year or so ago, has infused into the MSME policy and a new chapter on social um, innovation, value creation, sorry, which speaks to um, acknowledging, that's the government of Jamaica, acknowledging social enterprises as a, a, a credible business in Jamaica, which should um, acquire support from the relevant um, private sector and um, government agencies, say um, the um, JBDC, for instance, is, is, is pushing social entrepreneurship. Um, the Jamaica Social Investment Fund is pushing social entrepreneurship. Um, mm -hmm. The company's office of Jamaica is looking to see how they can also um, create a category to register social enterprises. So um, it's a growing sector that we're um, trying to get more young people and also the public more aware of um, the possibilities there and opportunities for them. Um, um, so it's, it's, we're working more on the, the um, showing the impact of um, starting much, much earlier before people leave high school. Some countries we're working with children in primary schools, interestingly. That's an interesting context to put it in. Um, but uh, that, that's the approach that we're taking to promote social entrepreneurship education. A lot of content is online. Um, there are um, many social sort of enterprises here in Jamaica. If you just Google some of them, um, Death Can Coffee is one, um, mm -hmm. 360 Recycle is one. They have um, websites you can follow to, to see how that goes. But there's information out there. Um, but if you want more, you can still contact us. And interestingly, because of how um, the program is set up, uh, as um, Josiane would have said, um, her program has engaged um, sometime parents from the PTA have come in to support them to build the products, also purchase and market. I think what they've done is also sow some of their placemats or table mats to the Ministry of Health down there in um, Trelawney. So mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of ways that people can, can participate. What one activity that is very strong for um, the development of the sector um, is the buy social campaign. So uh, that would have started some time ago um, but I think the government will also be moving back to that approach to create public awareness around the sector because it will require um, more people to buy from socially responsible um, companies um, as such as social enterprises, which means that you're buying Jamaica and building Jamaica. 
All right. Um, so people online did. Um, <laughs> well, uh, Jose, it seems like you're becoming a superstar overnight because the people online really shouting you out and giving you some real love. Um, well, <laughs> Cleon Randy Singleton saying, congrats on fixing the road. My road needs fixing as well. So I don't know. <laughs> Cleon, sounds like you might need to start your own social enterprise. I don't know. Or maybe you can call Jose, borrow some of her expertise. Maybe she can have a consultation, but she's very expensive. But, you know, I mean, maybe you can work out a thing. I don't know. But um, if you talk to her, maybe you can work out a thing for Fix the Road. You know what I mean? She seems, yeah, she has a bright future ahead of her. So if you get in on the ground floor, no, while well, she's a little inexpensive, you can maybe work out a thing for you. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. Um, Cleon, we're talking, the program is actually being offered through the British Council. Jamaica and um, you know they in, in uh, an agency if I'm not mistaken correct me if I'm wrong Damien an agency of the British um, government which works throughout um, different parts of the world providing social and creative intervention programs working with people on the ground and so on so if you want to get more information on the program itself and how it's partnering with local agencies um, and, and bringing the work um, bringing these programs in I should also mention that the program is which is the social entrepreneurship in schools program is funded also by the VM Foundation, longtime supporter of our young children and um, different projects to help them grow and develop and so on. So they're partnered and they're rolling it out in a number of schools and they're helping them to teach the youth, teach the youth about entrepreneurship, social entrepreneurship, so they can fix problems while also making a little bit of money, right? So that's the goal. Um, and we're talking with here with Jose, and like I said, she partnered, she was able to, with her classmates and so on, able to create an is initiative that helps helped to fix the road in front of their school, which is truly amazing. And I'm sure, you know, it, it's really great. Um, I almost lost my train of thought there. Let me just, in that case, focus on what's going on in on, online. Young Wiss bigging you up again, and more Cleon um, bigging you up again, Josine. So I guess maybe tell us a little bit more about yourself so that if persons want to, you know, tell us more about yourself. What are some of your likes, your hobbies, your interests on? So first, introduce yourself as a young businesswoman growing up in Jamaica. Go ahead. So as they have already known, my name is Josine Skeel. I am currently in grade 13, which is the sixth form program. I enjoy, so I'm a bit of a nerd, you can say. I enjoy reading. I read a lot. <laughs> so in the future, I hope God's will, you'll see me owning my own business. Not going to say what it is right now, but you know, God is able. Uh -huh. And um, I like uh, having uh, my dreams come true. I like seeing young persons being a part of something that speaks volume and not seeing them on the streets, you know, with their pants down, digging, um, smoking and so forth. So I like seeing persons getting more involved in school and so forth. So thanks to all that is currently online, bigging me up and hopefully in the future, you'll see, you'll see me doing something great and putting greatness out there. Fantastic. And I hope like as you go and as you grow, Bring your friends with you, motivate them, share the message of entrepreneurship, let them appreciate that it starts with you. There are problems. Yes, the government is there. Yes, it's the government's responsibility to do a lot for the country. But at the same time, the power is also in your hands. And you can make a little profit. I mean, as entrepreneurship, as they say, is the science of solving other people's problems for profit. So if you're able to find a social ill and actually find out a solution while making a little profit and giving back to your community, that's great. And so we want more young persons to take that on, to appreciate it and soak it in, absorb it, and then start utilizing it right across the country. I guarantee that if more persons start doing it, then we're going to see some true transformation right across the board in the country. All right. Ah, so the, the comments are coming in hard and fast. Can't keep up with them. But I love that. Um, <laughs> Uh, young Wes Bernard, yes, we always, Dan Roberts being up saying, yes, girl, we always put God first. Latoya Rabbi is giving you a whole heap of love emojis, all kind of thing. Dan Roberts, family repping for you. De Marquise Devante Malcolm saying, true leader, saying you're a motivator, all sorts of things. So lots of big up coming. So Damian, Nakita, the proof is in the pudding, as they say. Yeah. As you can see, when one young person steps out there and start doing positive things out there the reaction i mean i can't even quantify what i'm looking at right now the, the reaction is uh, it, it's clear you know what i mean so once again to you guys i want you to just 
spread the gospel of this program and what it aims to do and what it aims to, 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 to accomplish with our young people. I'm going to start with you, Damien. Just give them a synopsis of what this program aims to do and what it tries to accomplish with our young people. Then I'm going to go over to you, Nakita, so you can, you're on next day, you can start preparing what you're going to say. All right. So Damien, over to you. All right. So, so the, the, the outcome or objective of the program is to address issues around youth unemployment, but through um, helping young people to acquire social entrepreneurship skills uh, for the 21st century, which will allow them to transition from school to the work world or to even higher education. Um, so that, that's in essence what we're trying to achieve, um, creating a better future for Jamaica, um, allowing young people to look on the world from a more, um, from a more global um, perspective, understanding that even though they're in a small country as Jamaica, their impact can be far reaching. Um, their products can be far reaching. Um, some people might think that uh, social enterprises is only about little profit, but I can let you know that some of the social enterprises that are um, across the world are some of the big um, money making companies. So we want to, to establish that that's um, something that um, is at um, their, their reach um, by starting now early, um, learning first about the skills that they need. Um, not everybody will want to run their own social enterprise, um, but you might want to participate uh, as a staff member in a social enterprise, which mm -hmm. means you're still uh, working towards addressing some social good. And we're seeing now across the world, it's, it's been tested and proven based on evaluations and reports done that um, more young people are looking to be um, employed or work with or start organizations that have a, a social good. So and that's our, um, um, our objective to, to make that um, change and help young people to, to see themselves as the change makers in today's society. All right, Nakita, your turn. Well, I'll try to talk up on that. Um, just to say that, you know, we don't live in isolation, though we're a little isolated at the moment. And so um, as we you know, develop um, our citizens, our leaders of tomorrow, um, that we, we support them on this journey and, and help them to be productive citizens, help to shape um, the direction that they're going into. And um, calling on the community, calling on the alumni associations to um, support um, these initiatives, their schools initiative, get them into um, social enterprise, so that we can even change the culture of homes or even our schools, even operators. I mean, fixing the road, these are students fixing the road. Imagine if the school took on the project and what the, what the income it could generate for that school or for those schools. So, you know, let's us pivot as well. Um, social enterprise, enterprise is a opportunity, it's an opportunity for us to pivot, especially now during COVID-19. All right, fantastic. All right, Josine, uh, last thing I'm going to do with you is just I'm going to give you a chance to big up your school because it seems to be producing some nice quality students down there. I mean, I, I would be, it would be remiss if I did not let you take the chance to and shout out your, your principal, your teachers, the persons out there and the whole school environment who are contributing to, you know, the, this, this social entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship project and as well seem to be producing some quality students down there. So go ahead. Take, take a couple of minutes and just big up your school. So first, I would like to thank, Hol thank Holland High School for this great opportunity. My principal, Mr. Dale Evans, Vice Principal, Ms. Blago, she has been with me through a lot of things. Um, I can't even say how much I appreciate her. And Ms. McKenzie for um, encouraging me to do my best and always telling me that I'm going to do great. Um, Ms. Fraser, she was the person who introduced me to this um, club, because it's a club at our school. So big up to all the Holland High School students that are watching, and even those that are not watching at the moment, but will be watching the, pre the preview later. Mm -hmm. um, thanks to all my family. Thank you all for sending me some love. Um, I just want to say that Holland High School, yes, they produce a lot of great students because even now you have some persons who have already gone out to start doing their own, making their own businesses. So uh, this social enterprise has actually helped them to, you know, open their mind, open their understanding to go out, 
venture out and to see what is it that they can start doing to make Jamaica a better place. Um, those who would like to be a part of social enterprise, there's a webinar at three today. So you guys can go on out, seek, um, join this session. Um, I promise it will be great. And you will see me there as well, a part. So guys, come on out, experience, come and experience this opportunity, this greatness, because trust me, it doesn't end here. And down in the future, I can say that we'll be seeing more greatness from schools all across Jamaica. Just get on board. It's a great experience. It's not just about working, working, but while working, you actually do have a lot of fun. Thank right. you all. Well, I don't think you could have at boy camp PR for the amount of um, brand ambassadorship for she just do a while again a day, man. Nakita. I know, I know. Amazing. All right. So um, once again, persons are asking how they can partner with you, how they can just uh, repeat again ways in which they can connect with you. And um, if they want to lend support, if persons who are associated with alumni associations or charitable organizations or any, or any individual who just hears what's going on, sees what's going on and wants to maybe get involved, how can they do so? Damian. Right. So um, we're asking, there are different ways persons can really continue to support. Um, first, at a community level, uh, for the schools that might be close um, to you, or if you're an alumni, you can reach out um, to, to your school and to see how you can lend the support on the ground. Um, you'll need to um, contact the British Council to, to find out which schools we're in currently. Um, so we are on um, our Facebook page, that's British Council Caribbean. Um, our website is also um, caribbean.britishcouncil.org. Um, you can contact us there. You can call our offices. All our information is provided there, um, also by email. Um, for the VM Foundation, you can contact, you can uh, reach out to their website also, which has information and, and also resources on, on the program that you know, people generally can utilize around social entrepreneurship. All right, fantastic. I think we're going to um, call it a show at that. Thank you very much, all of you, for coming and sharing with us. I hope that more persons having seen this and um, interact with this, there are persons who are watching it now, are impacted. Those who will watch it later will also be impacted. Thank you so much for sharing the good news and the positive things that are going on in the country. This is the kind of news we love to promote, love to talk about. We love to talk about the, show, the ways in which our youngsters are being motivated to step into their potential activate you know, activate their potential step into their purpose and start living their best lives that's the objective that's the goal that's why this show exists so thank you very much for coming and helping us to achieve that all right thank you again to all of you having said that thank you to everyone who tuned into our discussion especially those of you who sent in your questions and your comments really i really appreciate those and if you send in a question or you have a question and you want to send it you want to put it in go ahead we'll be going through afterwards and we'll be able to channel you in the right direction, answer your questions and feed them on to either Nakita or Damien or even Josine so that you can get the information that you need. Now, remember, our audience plays a major part in our show. So if there's anyone in particular you'd like us to have in studio, let us know and we'll try to have that person in studio as soon as possible. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram at Jamaica Information Service to see who will be in studio next. And while you're at it, check out British Council check out VM Foundation, check out VM Base, all the different ways in which um, you'll see all the different work that they're doing and they might just spark something else that you want to get involved with and, you know, partner with our, you know, influence or just some more information that you can learn. All right. Now we do this every week live on Facebook. I've been your host, Vaughn Davis, and this has been Studio 58A Live. Thank you very much for joining us and please have a wonderful day.